What's goody? Gotta watch this and get high though. Daniel O'Neill is a YouTuber from the UK with a channel called English Woodsman, where yeah. he's been uploading videos of his wild camping, stealth camping, and woodland camping trips in the UK for almost 10 years. Facts. Most of the channel's videos feature Daniel reviewing Better. camping gear for his viewers and showing footage of his adventures in the great outdoors. For the most part, they're pretty tame, but in August 2023, he uploaded a video of his camping trip in the woodlands close to his home, and the footage is pretty disturbing. The first part of the video pretty much just shows Daniel walking through the woods and talking to his subscribers, eating berries, and pointing out the sights on the way to the campsite. At several points along the way, he pauses to mention the footprints and garbage he sees lying on the trail, indicating other people had been there in the last few days. W mans. W comms. In here. There's a lot of rubbish around here. Yeah, I could stare at this. Does get used, doesn't it? After about a 20 minute walk, he sits down in a clearing where he plans to set up camp for the night and leans back on a tree to eat his noodles. I swear to God, is it not the same narrator every single one of these scary videos? Damn, what's he eating? As he talks to the camera. It's not until around 25 Ramen? minutes into the video that things start to get seriously disturbing for Daniel. Be out Friday night, but I'm going away Saturday, so I've got a bit of a drive as well. So I didn't want to be tired, and it's going to throw it down Friday night as well. And rain camping is really good. It's really good. That fake footsteps, bro. Is that a badger? Hello? Even though some pretty human like footsteps could be heard right behind Daniel, as soon as he turns around to scan his environment, there's nobody in sight. What's most disturbing is that as soon as he turned around and yelled hello, the footsteps immediately stopped. For the next few minutes, he sits down and tries to regain his composure as he sips his coffee and eats his noodles, but things only continue to get even more creepy as the sun begins to set. There's that noise again. He better run, bro. Me, I'm out of there. I'm... Hello. First of all, why is he? Why are you even in a forest by yourself, bro? Like, I know you're Hello? a YouTuber and all, but like, bro, really playing with your life. You got a bit ahead of that. <laughs> you got a bit ahead of that, man. No disrespect. I love British people, UK, whatever, and your accent's amazing. But what sucks is if I ever go visit y'all. I'm going to be talking like that because I fuck with it and I want to be like y'all. In it. Sounds pretty funny, in it? But that's enough of that bull rubbish. It's enough of that rubbish. Let's get right back and do it. My fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. I know some of y'all about to be flaming me. About 40 minutes into the video, the footstep noises can be heard again. And this time it sounds like they're getting closer to Daniel. Cheers. By this Stupid. point, most people would have hightailed it out of there without any hesitation, but Daniel decides to sit back down to finish his dinner as he tries to calm his nerves for the second time. Amazingly, a few minutes later, it almost seems like he completely forgets about the footsteps and manages to think about less disturbing things, which is honestly pretty impressive. I'll, I'll read it in a second. But as darkness sets in, the eerie footsteps start up again. <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest. I can't stay here now. I want to be a wimp. I don't care if people call me a wimp in the comments, but I can't stay here. I'm, I'm too unsettled. I'm nervous. I've done camping like this a load of times. I think I'm going to go find somewhere else to get this bivvy set up. But I, I'm leaving this spot.
Understandably, after this third incident, <laughs> Daniel decides to head somewhere my else bad, for the my night bad, to my play bad. it safe. It's hard to know what exactly was making those sounds, but because they sounded very similar to human footsteps, it's possible that Daniel was being stalked by someone in the woods. This is obviously incredibly dangerous, as you can never really trust someone's intentions when you're in such a vulnerable position, all by yourself in unknown territory. It was either that or an animal walking through the grass, but because Daniel mentioned the grass was a little wet and wouldn't have made that dry sound if an animal stepped on it, this is pretty unlikely. Also, many people in the comments mentioned that no animal walks that uniform and steady. They stop, go, and change pace constantly. Either way, it's a good thing he decided to leave, because who knows what could have happened to Daniel that night. Daniel could have been no longer here. One what of the most happen? annoying things to me is spam texts and phone calls. Nah, you ain't you gonna get me. Surprised by you ain't gonna get me, sir. You're not gonna get me. W promo, though. The Rampant us. Range is part of a front range of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, made up of almost entirely public land within the Pike National Forest. Colorado, in the summer, you'll find there. lots of bikers enjoying the Rampant Range's elaborate trail system and exploring the great outdoors. For the most part, this part of Colorado is a paradise for anyone who enjoys spending time in nature. But over the past few years... This place looks like a... God, I look goofy right now. But this place looks like a... I forgot what I was there's been a pretty alarming trend on the rise with random people setting up wires on trees at just about head height in an effort to seriously injure bikers on the trail. In 2019, a post That's describing fucked. this terrifying trend was uploaded to Facebook. That's actually fucked. And disturbingly, the uploader meant if someone set up a trap and I'm riding my bike and I'm I'm zooming on that bitch and I get clotheslined by a fucking human that did some shit. Oh, uh, nah, bro. I'm leaving the country. Mentioned that one of his high school friends had lost his life as a result of running into a similar wire on a trail. Immediately, people jumped into the comments to point out how incredibly messed up it would be to do something like this, and how this kind of evil needs to be categorized as attempted murder if the suspects are ever caught. Yeah. A couple of years Fuck. before that post was made, in 2017, two motorbike riders uploaded a video to YouTube of their encounter with a similar wire, and although nothing happened to them, it was a very Damn, close Damn, I need call. to give me a little dirt bike. Pit bike. I'd get busted so fast on that shit. I swear I would. Damn. So once you see one of those or get caught in one of those, like I bet you're fucking on edge. Set up Every trail, time you're riding, it can be you're hard probably to tell like whether they were placed there out of malice or if a random camper or farmer placed the wires there to hang up clothes or something similar. But in cases like these where the wires are specifically placed on the trail, there's really only one reason people would do that, and that's to bring serious harm to w bikers Dodge. for some reason. W Dodge. Possibly they're annoyed with the constant loud sound of the bikes near their property or something else. But hopefully more measures can be taken in the future to prevent more people from getting hurt, especially because it's Me, not a I would just hear really, about motor bikers and, and right snow wheelers losing their it, lives over jump this Jump over of stuff. it and nosedive over that thing. That... Wherever there is for you, a dream, a goal, let's run there. Sick of all the ads like this one? Just head to adspillar.com. Laugh it up, Click on Laugh it up, because guess what? You're going to come watch this, this video, and I'm hitting you with an ad. YouTube by a user named Forest Fire number 21. He recorded it around 2 a.m. in me December 2014. Not job, but y'all. The uploader lives in a forest, and he mentioned that the noises in the audio were coming from deep in the woods behind his house. No, I'm, I'm out of there. That's some Caucasian shit. It's hard to make out what the child is yelling, but after listening closely, several users jumped in the comments to point out that you can also hear an adult voice yelling, where are you? In addition to the young female voice making most of the noise, this quieter, more subtle male voice that can also be heard in the audio only makes the whole incident that much more disturbing. 
Near the end of the video, the uploader mentions that after that night, he checked the news every day to see if he could find some explanation for the screams, but he never did. The fact that the screaming was captured at yeah, around 2 a.m. in the you freezing hear shit cold like that in the woods, you don't go the towards the that shit. Indicates that the uploader the could have genuinely recorded something pretty sinister taking place that night. It's hard to tell why. <laughs> All right, bro. I get it. You're trying to keep the vibe spooky. Why? Do, why is there a clip of the guy cutting down a tree in the snow? <laughs> the uploader would record and upload the audio instead of immediately calling the police after hearing a female voice in such obvious distress. But at this point, there's not much that can be done about it. And who knows, maybe the uploader did call the police. There wasn't much context given in the video's description. That was smooth though. He we made it feel, hope that look like it was that video that night was eventually solved. That was but smooth. based on the shrillness of the screams and the strangeness of the whole situation, we probably won't ever be able to know for sure. The Benjamin's talking. Lisa is a life coach and YouTuber who often uploads videos of what it's like living in her van and traveling the country on her own. One afternoon in 2022, Lisa had parked her van on the side of the road and left the side door of her van open while she cooked her dinner inside, when suddenly a sketchy looking guy approached no. her, poked his head in her van without her permission, and started asking her some pretty bizarre questions in French, a language Lisa doesn't speak. When she mentioned she didn't understand what he was saying, he pulled out a translator app to try to communicate with her, which obviously made her pretty uncomfortable, especially since she wasn't interested in talking to him in the first place after he invaded her personal space. After watching the guy struggle to use Google Translate for a few minutes, Lisa decided she'd had enough and shut the side door in his face, also closing the curtain to make sure the guy got the hint. Strangely, for over half an hour, the guy then stood outside in the rain and tinkered with the translator app to try to communicate with Lisa, even after she made it more than obvious that she wanted nothing to do with him. Just moved even closer so that I can't move out and so that I can't go forward. Please leave. Please leave, you sketchy, sketchy, sketchy person. Please leave. That's your chance. Get out. Skirt. Go. With a very shady him, demeanor, care. the man snuck into the bushes and pretty much just stalked Lisa from a distance, as if he thought she couldn't see him. As the sun began to set, Lisa kept an eye on the guy outside to make sure he didn't try to get close to her again, but the man just kept on bringing his car closer to her van and blocking her exit in different ways for more than half an hour. This thing is really starting to freak me out. It's been like a half an hour and it just keeps on moving his vehicle so he can see in my van here. And anyway, so I know uh, it's 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Fortunately, just as darkness had begun to set in, a family in an RV pulled up right behind Lisa and spent the night in the same parking lot as her, which comforted her enough to stay there the entire evening. Disturbingly, the guy left soon after the other family arrived, but came back about three hours later in the dead of night to check if Lisa was still there. When he saw the other family in the RV was also still in the parking lot, he left and didn't come back. The next morning, Lisa left early and never saw the guy again. It's hard to tell what the guy's exact intentions were, but based on his overall sketchy demeanor and questionable fit. behavior, they couldn't have been anything good. The one thing we can be sure about is that it's a good thing the other family in the RV arrived at the parking lot when they did. Otherwise, who knows what the man would have done to Lisa. Yeah, that's some weird shit, bro. I'm calling the cops and I'm fucking bashing his car. Welcome to your Walmart. Crack Walmart. Shield. Get a free replay. Walmart, why the fuck would you use that as your ad? In May 2014, an imager user uploaded a blog post where he talked about the time he went to visit a friend in northern Germany. According to the uploader, his friend told him about these pipes that he had found in the woods near his house that stuck up out of the ground like periscopes. Apparently, mm. his friend and his siblings played near the pipes as kids and knew that there were bunkers hidden below them, 
but their parents never allowed them to get near them out of concern for their safety. During the visit narrated in the blog post, the uploader and his friend decided to check out the pipes and finally go down into the bunkers that they never had permission to explore when they were younger, and they found some pretty disturbing stuff. A few hundred feet away from the trees, they found the entrance to the bunker covered with a loosely placed piece of wood that they easily removed with a crowbar. Once inside, all they could see were these long, seemingly endless, hospital-like hallways that extended for thousands of feet under the woods. As they ventured further and further into the maze of tunnels, they found graffiti on some of the walls, indicating they weren't the first people to get the idea to explore the underground bunkers. To the explorer's horror, one of the walls deep inside the tunnels had the word HELP in German graffitied all over it. It's possible that it was just sprayed on there by another group of teens trying to be funny, but the eerie nature of the bunker coupled with the general state of disarray really makes you wonder if something more sinister took place down there at some point, possibly mm. even written by German soldiers in the later parts of World War II. As they traveled deeper into the bunker, they found some more disturbing graffiti with one of the eeriest messages reading, Hello Satan, I love you. Obviously, that's not the kind of message you want to see in a tunnel system like this, but the two friends decided to keep on exploring anyway. After several hours down in the bunker, they ended up finding tons of more twisting, winding hallways, flooded rooms with old machines, and dark, narrow corridors that reached dead ends, but nothing more disturbing than the graffiti they had found a few hours earlier. The explorers managed to make it out of there safely and didn't go back there again. In the summer of 2016, reports started surfacing that people were finding dangerous booby traps along a very well-known hiking trail in the High Mountain Park Preserve in Wayne, New Jersey. As per the police reports, the traps mostly consisted of boards with nails sticking out of them, barbed wire, broken bottles placed along the trails behind or near rocks or logs, and other treacherous materials. As more and more complaints started coming in, police warned people to keep an eye out for the traps and even organized cleanup efforts to keep hikers safe during their tracks. What's most disturbing is that these traps were clearly placed there to hurt people, as there's really no other reason to put nails- ah, that's fucked up. Traps are fucked up. Moral of the story, don't- don't go into the fucking forest. Unless you got a fucking shotgun. But yeah, that's, uh, the end of the video, so bye.